You're listening to Guts and Grind with Siju and Sajin, making the real estate journey accessible to anyone. All right, welcome back. We are here with Guts and Grinds, another episode, episode 41. And we are here talking about how to make your home ready. With that, my co host, Sajin Abraham. How you doing, brother? Doing well, man. Doing well. Just uh, living the dream, right? Hey, man, that's all you can do, you know? As right. long as it's a dream and not a nightmare. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so far, it's been dreams. It's, it's been good. Life's good. good. Busy, busy, but good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I think I speak for you as well. But like, I like to stay busy because I feel like things, uh, progress is happening when, you know, have full days, right? So it's it's good. Oh, yeah. I mean, the days are insane but it's it's good though like and it's it's fun stuff stuff like this is is good it's it's yeah. you know it keeps us busy we love to do it so um yeah. and hope you guys are enjoying it but with that said today's episode is all about how to make your home ready i think our last episode was all about you know lining up the repairs getting the utilities turned on so today is going to be you know almost that final step before we list the home it's all about getting the home make ready clean it up and ready to rent. So, you know, obviously trickling from the last episode, it's about finishing and confirming your repairs are all done. That's going to be obviously key. You know, the blatant things that are out there that are the toilets that are leaking, the, the you know, whatever cabinets need to be repaired, anything that's aesthetic that you're looking at, you obviously want to take care of, including anything else that's not in the, in the view of the tenant, but making sure those things are done. Again, going through your punch list that, that we kind of said initially, making sure that the, the people that you paid to get the job done has completed those things. That's going to be key, but you know, follow up, right? So making sure if they've found anything else, right? There's been many times for me, I know that, Hey, we've done just a punch list. I have A, B, C, D here, but then the guy that's repairing the home says, Hey, I found, you know, E, F, G, also, you may have to go back. It may be an iteration of just going back and checking to see, hey, what are those new issues? Is it worth repairing? Obviously, you didn't see it in your first round. So I always had to have that happen. That's that's usually the thing that hits me all the time. I give them a list and the list just really just expands. <laughs> but but I think I think that's the benefit of having like someone else work with you in that, right? Because like, oh yeah, like even no matter how long have you been doing this, like you'll miss something, right? Like oh, yeah. uh, you might go too quickly in one room and you miss that this thing was leaking or this crack was on the wall or whatever. Right. And so having a second set of eyes, because at the end of the day, for me, at least, I don't want my tenant to call me about a repair once they're moved in. I want it to be as ready as possible. So whatever we could catch before people move in, the better or yeah. really before it's even shown, because I, it also affects the showing as well. Like if you see like this crack on the wall and you missed it, but your contractor caught it, get, get it fixed. Because like when people look at the house, they're going to look at that crack and be like, Oh, they're, show, they're presenting a house like this, like they must not care, or there might be more issues. I'm going to pass. Right. So you want it to be as, as beautiful as possible. Right. And so I think, I think it's good to have second set of eyes, you know? Yeah. And it. yeah. And, and for me, I have a guy, you know, again, having your guys, you know, that you normally work with, they know what the expectation is. I think that's the other, that's the other beauty of it. As you go through this again, it, it gets easier. It's like riding a bike as you learn to take off the training wheels and you keep going with it you know, it becomes a uh, cycle, right? And and the people that work with you normally, they know the cycle and right. it just makes your your life easier and it, you get it onto a, a systems because, um, you know, the guy that I, you know, I or the guys that I use, they, they normally know what to look for and they'll say, hey, this is out of place or that's, you know, what do you, what do you think about that? And, and I like their opinion about that. So yeah, for um, sure. I mean, for it's, it's invaluable, right? I mean, like it's, it's really good. So, so like Sid, you said, we make sure that all the repairs are done. And so moving after that, like, cause usually repairs will cause a mess, right? Like there's dust here and there, people track in dirt while they're coming in and out. So the next thing would be get the house professionally cleaned. This is something you could DIY if you are into that. We talked about in the previous episode, the things that I could push off off of my plate and hire someone else to do it. I'd rather do that just cause the time and also they'll get it way cleaner than I can. Like, like it's just, it's just what it is. Right. And so it's, it's important to get it professionally cleaned because you're presenting something to potential tenants. And so when they see and smell that things are clean and nice, they're more likely to, to rent from you, right? 
And so that's my advice. I would say get it professionally cleaned before you move forward. Any, any additional thoughts on that? I'm not great at cleaning. And I, don't, I think my wife told me that I, I don't clean my own house. So, <laughs> so cleaning another house, I, I completely agree with you. Like leave the profession. Like, I mean, for me anyway, if that's for you, then yeah, by all means, sure. um, I feel like the folks that actually do that do a great job at it. And it, it makes a world of difference, right? Even simple things as like putting an air freshener in the home, right? Yeah. I mean, it makes a world of difference to do those little touches when people come to view the house. You, you don't want to ha- walk into a house that, that smells funky, right? You want, you want right. it smelling like Lysol and, and you know, sun. It's clean. You just yeah. want that feeling of clean. Like when you walk in, like visually, like touching the countertops and you don't feel dust or grime. Yeah. You know, like looking at the floors and seeing that they're like sparkling, you know what I mean? Like, yep. and, and I kind of view the cleaners as a trade as well. Like they're equal to plumbers and electricians because they have the proper tools, the proper like supplies Chemicals. to be able to clean it properly and get it done fairly quickly too. Right. And so that's kind of my reasoning of like using professional cleaners to get, get things done just because I know they'll do a better job. hundred percent. And I've seen, I've seen amazing work, especially in the, in the bathroom areas. Oh man, they can do. Dude wonders there right i mean they have the right chemicals to do this stuff and 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 so yeah definitely get that professionally clean because obviously if you do that your next step of getting professional pictures will be worthwhile so i mean it's it's you you don't want to take pictures of a dirty house because right again the professional pictures piece of it is going to be to obviously for the listing and what is the first thing people see is the pictures. They, I mean, that is the first thing most people see is the pictures whenever uh, they're looking to potentially come view your house, right? So right. Um, if that's done properly, if the cleaning is done properly, the pictures will come out that much better. And the, the one thing I will say about professional pictures is, you know, try to make it professional. I know, I know our iPhones are, are great and they're, the cameras are super, super duper now, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but some of the angles, you know, paying 150 to 200, you know, dollars to a professional picture to just take really nice pictures and you can keep those stock. I mean, if the, if you get a nice set of pictures, if you're holding on to the property, what's nice about it is you keep the pictures, right. right. And, and keep them in your repertoire for when you turn it over again. And that's the exactly. beauty of that. And I think professional pictures goes a, a long way because it's that first impression. No, for sure. For sure. And it's kind of like, same thing as the cleaners and same thing as the trades. They have the right tools and they have the right eye. They have the knowledge, like, like you're paying them, not just because they have a nice camera, but they know the angle. They, they know the right lighting. They know how to set things up to be, you know, presentable. And so the whole goal is to make this property as presentable as possible because you want people to move in. Right. And also it sets a precedent of how you're going to be treating your tenants and how you expect them to treat your property. Right. Oh. If you present it, if you present a, ready-made, nothing's broken, everything's super clean, pictures were professionally taken. You're conveying a message to these people, right? And so that's kind of how I view it. I'm conveying that, hey, I respect this place and I respect my tenants. That's why I'm doing all this work. And so I expect you to do the same. And so like, that's kind of a, another added bonus of doing all these things. And like a lot of this is DIY. And so, and when, when I first started, I did a lot of it myself. Just because, you know, you don't have the money. Sometimes you don't have the 150 to pay someone to take pictures. So you just snap it yourself. Or you don't have like the 200 bucks to have a professional clean. So you clean it yourself. And so those are things that you could do. But just know that if you're not bringing it up to a certain level, you can't expect your tennis to bring that game as well, right? Like you want them to be at the same level as you. 100%. Great comments on that, Saj. And, and I agree. You know, I mean, everybody's different too. So eventually you want to get to a where you can just outsource everything that you're doing right to make sure it gets done properly but you know if if you're just getting and starting the game there's no harm in doing what you're you know doing the pictures yourself hey you're you're getting it done i think i think that's that's the biggest step to take away from the call it don't 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 think that you have to outsource everything if you don't have the money for it which again that's how we did it the grind is to get into the business right like and yeah. put your money and get your money working for you whether it's if you had to do some of the the leg work and, and put the elbow grease in to, to clean those toilets trust me i've done it i it's put it, man yeah we've, it's, it's, we've it's, both it's, done it and it's yeah. been um you know i've walked around like a maid just you know cleaning everything like right. like, a, like a crazy man but you know it's yeah. it depends where you're at and and it, it, it kind of gives you perspective too so of what value the the cleaner spring or the photographer spring because sure. yeah. if you're not in their shoes and you see the hard work you'll never value them either so i think that that was very important for i think both of us we've we've kind of learned through that yeah for sure 
yeah, final thoughts on, on anything else before we wrap up, Saj? Yeah, no, I, I mean, like, I, I think don't be scared to do it yourself, but also don't be scared to pay money for professionals, right? Yep. I mean, like, there's value in all of that. Yep. And so, and I remember early on, I would devalue paying someone to get things done. But as, you know, time progresses, I start realizing time is more valuable. And so that money I'm spending is allowing me to focus on other things, right? So again, Sid, you kind of drove it home, but if you are strapped for cash or you don't want to spend that money, do it yourself, do it yourself. And then kind of go through that journey. So everything that we're saying, I don't want it to be a deterrent for you to not get into a property and get started, but this is just kind of how we're, we've operated now, right? So yeah, those are my final thoughts as far as like getting it going. Like it's important to make sure all the repairs are done, make sure it's cleaned, whether it's DIY or professional, make sure it's very clean and then make sure you have really nice pictures to be able to post. The one thing I'll, I'll, I guess I'll wrap it up and end with this again, we'll wrap it up again. <laughs> Sorry for the <laughs> multiple wrap ups, but is everybody has 24 hours, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, or, you know, if you make $50,000, so everybody has 24 hours to do what they want to do. Right. So right. again, just hits home the value of time, which is the most uh, precious thing that we have. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys made it to the end here with us, you know, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We have a, a lot more episodes and a lot more content that we're trying to put out there and follow us on YouTube, Instagram, you know, the other platforms that we're on. Again, we appreciate you guys. If you uh, have any comments, thoughts, anything you want to see later or in the future. Thanks again, Saj, for joining me on this show. And uh, that's a wrap. Till later. later. Y'all. Thanks for listening to Guts and Grind with Siju and Sajin. Be sure to tune in next time. Thank you.